Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, and I'm coming to you from Western Colorado in the United States with another edition of Ask Dave. Today we're going to take a look at the Rig Expert Zoom uh, antenna analyzer, which just came in the mail. An interesting story, uh, and Augie offered to loan me his and even sent it to me. And then I went to the Reno Ham Fest and met some people from Rig Expert and mentioned to them that I wanted to uh, review their antenna analyzer. And so they sent me one. So I've got two right now, and I'm going to send the one back to the Augie with a great deal of thanks for uh, uh, sending me that to uh, 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 test. He wishes to remain anonymous, and I will respect that request. So let's see what we have inside, shall we? Uh, we open it up, and there is a user manual here for the AA230 Zoom. Okay, it's an antenna and cable analyzer from Rig Expert. I was really impressed with the manual. The manual is very straightforward in wonderful English. And, um, you know, for something that was made in the Ukraine, uh, they did a beautiful job with the manual and how to use the thing. This happens to be the Bluetooth model. So in theory, that's going to connect right to the computer. We'll see. We'll see how that works. I don't mind uh, connecting um, with a, uh, a USB cable if need be. Now I have two other analyzers to compare this with. This right here is the FAVA5, which was uh, made uh, by funkamateur.de, okay, designed by DG5MK. Very nice little analyzer. It goes all the way up to 600 megahertz. And then I have my classic, this is the MFJ, and it's the 259B. Now, they still sell the 259, but it's in the C model right now. This has been a workhorse for me, an absolute workhorse. This is all analog, except where there is a digital dial, you can read things out. Uh, but it has an analog oscillator in it whereas these other two are digital. So let's take a look at what we get when we open the box, okay? Uh, here is a piece of paper that actually gives the serial number, and they include the, um, the well, first of all, the Bluetooth option on the antenna analyzer, the user's manual, an N-type to SO239 adapter, a case with a strap, a USB cable, and the AAA size batteries. Now, the thing will run on either the AAAs internally, or you can attach it to USB and a, a five volt power source, and it will run on that, okay? Whereas uh, this one here runs uh, on um, either a whole bunch of AA's, to get 12 volts, or you can put 12 volts in uh, to, 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 You can plug in 12 volts, and you can run this thing indefinitely that way. The FAVA5 runs on internal double A's, um, but when you plug in the USB cable, which goes right, right there, uh, then you have to, or it will run on the USB. Okay, let's take a look here at what we've got. We've got the um, antenna analyzer itself sitting here. It's a little hard to get out, so they provided a nice finger hole so that you could pick the thing up, and it's all packaged in here. So let's set the main box aside and open this up and see what we can, can get out of it. Well, it opens here. Okay, and in the back, we have um, the aforementioned case. That's kind of nice. And it's, it's got a piece of plastic on the thing, and you can punch the buttons through uh, the plastic on this. Also is a USB, sturdy USB cable. Um, 
Chinese uh, writing, Russian writing, and here it is down here in English, made in China. Okay, as is everything these days. This is a standard USB Type A to Type B cable like you would use for an HP printer. Okay, you've probably got several of them lying around. If not, they provide you one, which is rather nice. Also included in here are batteries. Little, um, I wouldn't expect too much out of these little uh, batteries. Note they're triple A's. Triple A's are more expensive than double A's. Um, so you may find yourself wanting to use that USB power uh, as much as you can. Okay, and we open it up and push this thing out. Here it comes. Now there's one other little accessory here. There it is. You'll note here that this being European and designed for bigger antennas has not like the German one which has a BNC connector on it. This has an N connector. Now the PL259s that we use so much in the United States are not really used much in Europe. Um, the end connector is technically superior. It will allow you to connect without any sort of uh, an impedance bump. Now something they warn about, when you put this thing in here, don't twist the actual uh, antenna analyzer because end connectors are not meant to do that. You have to put the thing on and screw the connector on with the shell like this. If it's going on at all, let's see. Okay, feels like it. And then we've got our PL259 coming out the end. So to put the batteries in, uh, we unlock it. This opens up. And so let's, oh, we're gonna have to cut that. My handy box cutter for And we'll put the battery cover back in. And lock it. There. All right. I guess we can take this off the front here. Let's see, how do we turn it on? I suppose I could get the instruction manual out. But uh, let's see, here's the turn on and turn off. So we'll turn it on and we're going to go for an SWR meter. So here's the down arrow. And we check the OK. And we have to put in the frequency. Um, It's 115 megahertz right now. Okay. What would happen if we press a, a one? Nope. It's not what we wanted to do. Cancel. But you know what? I'm going to look in the book. Main menu appears. Cursor up, cursor down. Scroll through the menu. Then, okay, this is cursor up, cursor down. Uh, main menu, there's the OK button. Um, multifunction keys. SWR chart will go ahead and attach. This is the MFJ Octopus, which I have um, elements for 80, 40, 20, and 10. And let's see what we get here. Let's uh, go back to SWR chart and do OK. 
Now well, it's yeah, we need to change the center frequency there. Um, use the arrow keys to decrease the center frequency. Do not forget to press the OK key. Data screen, frequency and range entry. Press three, frequency and range entry. Okay, we're gonna look um, let's set the center frequency between 3 and 10. Let's set it at, um, and then we'll set it at 15. So it's 0, 1, 5, 5. That should be 0. One, five, okay, enter. Now let's uh, go ahead and have it sweep. <laughs> okay, so this is the 20 meter 20 meter one right here, that's the um, 40 meter one right there, and 80 is way over there, boy. Um, let's see if we can't, uh, uh, let's see, we do three for f entry. Let's do a 14, 150. So we'll go there, there, and that will be 14, one. Five, O, oh, plus or minus 14, we'll say. Okay. Enter. Okay, now let's go back to just SWR meter. And we'll press OK. And the SW, press this to start. And the 14150 frequency is 1.94 okay now um, this by the way is very close to what I got when I tested with the other two uh, meters now let's do something with a, a much smaller range let's go to f3 um, cancel and uh, cancel again and go back up to SWR chart and we're going to try and do this for the, the 20 meter band, okay? So we're going to go, okay, there it is. But now let's go to 3, 14, 150 plus or minus, let's make that 0, and 0, and a 150. No, 200. 200, okay. Now let's um, go ahead, okay. Okay, and now what you see is the octopus, which could use a little bit more tuning, but I set it for CW. Actually, I set it for um, See, the minimum is at 14030. That doesn't do anything. Um, okay, that I actually use this antenna right now for whisper. Okay, so this is really cool. I like the way you can set the thing up to do quick ranges across a band. There's a way to get the SWR on several different frequencies at once if you're trying to tune a multi-band antenna. And uh, overall, um, I thought that screen would be terribly small to see, but it has a very high resolution. So you can see it uh, quite well on there. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay, so that's the unboxing and quick test 
video for the Rig Expert AA230 Zoom. You can buy these um, among several places. I'll put a link on the screen. I'll put the price um, up on the screen along with uh, where you can buy the thing. So thanks for watching this introductory video to this. I think we'll do a few more videos on it. I've got lots of other things to do videos on. I am uh, currently working on the little MFJ Rig Pi, uh, which as it turns out is uh, quite a bit more of a project than I thought it would be. I have a lot to learn. Uh, the people who wrote, well, Howard Nurse wrote the manual, and he knows a lot about software, and uh, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> I have to discover all of the little things that are in there. And what I'm going to try to do with that one is make it real clear so that uh, between what I tell you and what the instruction manual tells you, you can get the thing up and on the air. All righty. So uh, please be sure to check out uh, my page um, uh, let's see, it's dcastler.com slash support. It shows all the different ways that you can support uh, this website with a, a tip jar, recurring tip jar, Patreon, uh, and so on. A word about the general uh, thumb drives. I don't have them yet. Um, I need to get an assistant to help me get that stuff ready. There's a lot of work to update those. They are eight years out of date. So until next time, 73.